Good morning, everyone. <laughs> well, we just want to welcome everybody here this morning, and, and uh, we want to welcome the presence of the Lord, especially in this place. And we're so, so grateful that everybody chose to come out here this morning, and I want to put a plug in for men's uh, prayer breakfast this next Saturday as well. Um, we're planning to do it down at the Field of Dreams or uh, Orchard City Park there off of 2100 Road. And uh, we're planning for 7.30 and um, bring your own coffee and we'll, we'll go from there. So we've um, got some scripture here this morning, but we're just so glad that everybody can come out here for worship and for the word. Good morning. Am I on? Okay. Um, as I was just... Praying about what to, what songs to pick and what to focus on this morning. Um, I just felt like God gave me these verses. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me. Sorry, not that part. <laughs> One thing I ask of the Lord. This is what I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. And your face, Lord, I will seek. I am still confident of this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Take heart and wait for the Lord. And I just felt like um, we were living in kind of a tumultuous, crazy time with a lot going on. And um, I just think, where, where better to be than seeking his face, right? That's where we need to be. He's going to renew our mind. He's going to renew our spirit. He's going to give us direction. And there's no better place. There's no better place. And I've just been trying to remind myself when I want to be on my phone or... Uh, doing less productive things to just stop and pray and just be like, God, what do you want? What do you want to say? And um, so we invite you to come. And some of these songs are a little bit older, so hopefully you know them. But um, we just invite you to really enjoy the presence of the Lord this morning. So it's so good to see you all. See your faces. That's great. <laughs> One thing I 
ready for revival out there. Anybody praying for revival? I see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes. The whole earth shakes.
one last song. We want to sing this as a blessing over you, as peace. Um, Jesus is the Prince of Peace, right? And that's something we definitely need. I don't know if you've heard this song, but if you have, go ahead and sing along. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Sing that again. realize how much we miss each other. We uh, communicate so many different ways in our culture, but it's not the same as being in your house in the same room together. And so, Lord, we pray a protection over everyone. We pray a blessing, Lord, those that are watching on YouTube and those that perhaps are in the car uh, listening. Um, uh, we just pray for everyone to be safe and everyone to be well. Uh, and, and we just thank you, Lord, for your sweet presence here this morning. Lord, be with Grady uh, as he's in the hospital. Pray that he'll be coming home uh, in the next day or two. We continue to lift up Mike and Leslie Mills as Mike recovers from surgery. Lord, there's a lot of people going through difficult times. We lift up uh, Bobby and Sammy Dawes and the continued recovery there and Jason over in Greeley who continues to be in therapy but is making uh, strides in his recovery. Lord, so many uh, Lord, who have been impacted in different ways, but 
Uh, Lord, you're good. And Lord, we're going to come through this uh, stronger and better than we uh, ever were before. Lord, I pray your blessing, as that last song said, that you would bless us and keep us, Lord, and, and uh, make us uh, be a blessing as we go out through the marketplace and through our lives, Lord. Uh, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, since we don't have our normal ways of communicating, oh my goodness, I told somebody, you know, in, in Georgia opened up a month, over a month ago, and they averaged 25% uh, of their normal attendance. And so we did some calculating. We go, oh, we're going to be fine. And uh, wow, we're glad to see all of you. We'll make some extra arrangements uh, for overflow. Pastor Dan has been running around, not only getting ready for Did I do that? Oh, okay. Oh, Lance, it was you. Okay. <laughs> Always look for somebody to blame right away. <laughs> um, just uh, in, in addition to getting ready for a wedding this Wednesday evening and, and all the media and putting things on the screen when we come in, uh, Pastor Dan has been rewiring uh, this building so we can set up a student center. We've got a, a room set upstairs for 20. And uh, wouldn't that be crazy if we just filled like every big room in this, in this place with God's people? Um, it wasn't our goal. And uh, wow, I'm so glad to see all of you. And uh, God's blessing on you. We're going to do everything we can, as we said, for not only to keep you safe, but we want you to feel safe. We really want you to feel safe, and we want you to feel that uh, while we may never be able to do enough to keep everyone well, we want to go to bed at night, lay our heads on the pillow, and say, you know what, we've done everything we possibly can to make sure all of you are safe. And that's, uh, you know, I've never, I, I've always felt a little like a shepherd, you know, the sheep are running a hundred different directions, and you're running out there trying to drag them in. I've had, that, I've had that experience as a shepherd, but I've never had the experience when I feel in my heart so much that I want everybody to be well. I want everybody to get through this okay. And, uh, you know, it's not a heavy burden. Uh, not really. Well, yeah, it is. It's not a horrible heavy burden. It's just a, just a feeling that all of our pastors and staff have here and so we're going to keep doing that and if any of those things seem a little bit like we're dictating or we're heavy-handed or we're trying to run around and tell you what to do we're not doing that I want you to know that some of you over here have masks I guess this is mask oh one they've got one over here uh, John if you want you can no. <laughs> um, yeah, we're just not going to run around and say, where's your mask? Or if you really loved me, you would wear a mask. There's way too much of that going on everywhere. Won't be happening here. But we'll be spreading you out some more, and we'll be opening some rooms. And so you might want to get here uh, at a, on time, because you might get sent to another room to watch us on a screen just so that we can do the best that we can. A couple of important announcements. Um, there, the baby changing table is down in the far bathroom because the nursery can't be opened right now. And I apologize, that's kind of one of the awkward things. And uh, where's Sage? She's out in the foyer. Well, if she, if she decides to sing at the top of her lungs while I'm preaching, I don't care. These are not ordinary times. And... Those of you sitting around her, just sing with her. I don't care. We'll stop and sing with her if she wants to sing. So changing table down there. Um, I have some, I already talked to three different families that I tried to find the other day. I was able to, I met a semi-load, and they loaded my truck down with these grocery boxes. And I thought, I signed up for it because I thought I can, over the next week, give them away. What I realized when we started unloading was they were coming out of a refrigerated truck. And I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> so I, uh, my, my truck barely made it up the hill. I've got eight or nine uh, boxes. If I mentioned to you that I wanted to give you one, and I was trying to find you the other day, please, after the service, they'll be back there. 
Uh, you kind of have to wait at a safe distance, but we're going to take the refrigerated stuff out of the refrigerator, put it back in the box. My goal is that every one of these boxes will find a nice home before I go home today. And then, uh, this is pretty important. Chuck, where's Chuck? Oh, Chuck, come up here. Chuck just turned 80. <laughs> come on up. No, actually, Chuck just feels 80. Because Chuck and Lance were, um, they were building the wall and a lot of, lot of other things you guys have been doing. But uh, we love you. We're going to sing happy birthday uh, to you, and then we're going to do it again in just right. a minute. Uh, how many of you love this guy? If, yeah, let's. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Chuck. Happy birthday to you. Love you, man. Okay, I want Jean and her daughters to come up here now. Hey, we're just, we haven't been together in so long. We're just going to do family stuff at a distance. Now, when Chuck turns 90, he will get roses in a basket, in a box, or a bag. But you don't get one of these till you turn 90. And I want you just to come up here. I, I'm going to put you up here because I want everybody to be able to see you. Come here. And I'm going to let them, they're family, so I'm going to let them help you. I would normally run over there and help you come up here, but we're social distancing. Yeah, I put that, Chuck did that too, I think, or, or Chuck and Lance. And we have a throne for you. This is the 90-year-old throne, although it's not that old. Would you have a seat there? I'm going to ask your daughters to come on either side. And uh, if you've got a phone and you want to take some pictures of this and send it to me, these are cards. May I, may I take this down? You can take, oh yeah, I'll stay back here and you can <laughs> catch your breath. When you're 90, you can wear a mask or not. You could do, you could do whatever you want at 90. Those are yours. And when you leave, be sure and take those. Those are from the church for you. And we love you. Oh, I love, we love all you. Love you. Wow. Amen. Well, let's sing it again. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jean. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Stop crying. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> and I got to preach. <laughs> we love you. We love you. We talked about a reception, and right now, um, really, we're not doing that kind of stuff, so, but boy, I, we hope your birthday's amazing, and if you want to have a big party when all this is over, let me know, um, with just any excuse to have a nice big party. <laughs> I hope all of you will someday know how blessed I am, oh. you can be blessed as I am, with a church family that loves and shows it. Thank you. Yeah. God bless you. I want virtual hug. As I mentioned, there's a wedding here on Wednesday. Please pray for Pastor Dan and Jenny. We just went through a wedding, and we didn't even have to do half the arrangements they're doing and the work, and it's going to be outside here, and... Uh, for those of you that don't, I think most of you already realize that I am missing how simple it used to be to have church. Oh my goodness, everything was so simple and I didn't even appreciate it like I should have. We just show up and have church, show up, have coffee shop, show up, it's so easy. Um, and I miss that. I do want to read a statement, I'm very serious about it. Um, how many of you know that there's a lot of strife and conflict in our world. It's a tragedy what's happening in Minneapolis and all the other cities, and I think we as Christians need to condemn that kind of violence 
against this man, but also the violence that's happening in response to that. How do you, as my new daughter-in-law posted in her to hear youth group, how do you solve the problem of violence with more violence? And, and we need to be in prayer, but um, I just prayed. I felt like I needed to say something to all of you and everyone out there listening, and hopefully even people that aren't a part of the church family will pick this up. I'm going to be doing a devotional on it this week. Uh, but we're living in a day of intense upheaval and rebellion. The states are rebelling against the federal government. The counties are uh, rebelling against the state government. And local governments are uh, rebelling against uh, county government. And a lot of it has to do with a lot of things not making a lot of sense. I get that. I understand that. But um, it's fostering. It's fostering an environment of uh, mistrust and anger and even fear. And I thought of three words. I'm just praying for all of you today and praying for our church. And what would this look like when we come through this? Will we be better? Or will we not be better? Will we be bigger or will we be smaller? What, what will it look like when it's over? I'm, I'm as concerned now about that as I am about what it looks like going through this. What will it be like and I'm even thinking about our country. What is our country going to be like on every level as we get through this? And I thought of three words, tolerance, respect, and love. Tolerance is the ability or willingness to accept someone in spite of the existence of opinions or behavior that one does not necessarily agree with. That's tolerance. Respect. A feeling of deep admiration for someone uh, or elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements. Respect. Love. An intense feeling of deep affection for someone or something. 1 John 3.14, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. And, and he didn't say those who... Uh, uh, we know that we've passed from death to life because we tolerate. Or we know we've passed from life to death because we respect. We know love is the, love is the, the mark of God's people. Um, I have basically abandoned Facebook. Um, I go check the birthdays in the morning. And I wish people happy birthday. I might occasionally post a scripture. I'm going to use that platform for my devotions going forward, but I've basically abandoned Facebook because of the lack of tolerance and respect that's being exhibited by Christians towards those who disagree with them. You cannot say you love others when you treat them with contempt. You say, well, it's just Facebook. Contempt is contempt. Disrespect is disrespect. Lack of tolerance is lack of tolerance, uh, no matter what. In Matthew 5.22, Jesus is teaching on anger and murder, and he says, do not call someone a fool. Anyone who does that will be taken before the Sanhedrin or the highest court of the land. Christians and the church have an opportunity to rise above what's going on in our world. We need to learn tolerance, we need to learn respect, and we need to learn how to love again in that order. Jesus basically said that contempt is even worse than anger. We can be angry, but let's not, folks, let's not allow ourselves to go to the point where we have contempt for some people over a political thing or a, or a mask or not a mask. Let's just put those things aside, amen? I felt like I have to say it, and I may say it a few more times if necessary, but I read some things and I go, we're better than that. I respond to a post and later I think, I'm better than that. Why did I do that? Why did I say that? Oh, because my feelings were hurt. Or you know what? Somebody disagreed with me or not enough people liked my post. There's a point where we just go good grief. What is the devil doing to us? 
in this thing called Facebook. And uh, you know why you said, oh, you've abandoned it because you because of what other people are doing it? No, I abandon it because I don't have a high level of self-control. How many of you know when you don't have self-control about something, just get away from it. So I, I didn't quit Facebook because of any of you. I quit Facebook because of me and because I want to honor God and I can't, I can't always respond the way I should in the moment. Well, today is Pentecost Sunday, and I can't, I don't know what's going on with this. Do I need to use this? Because I, I don't, it feels like I'm hollering in the bottom of the canyon. Um, and I don't know what it sounds like on YouTube. Are we okay now? There we go, that's better. Um, what, a, what a day to come back to church, the day of Pentecost. How many of you, how many of you get all excited and celebrate Christmas every year? I feel sorry for the three or four of you that don't. <laughs> How many of you spend weeks getting ready and decorating the house for Pentecost? <laughs> Dave, I, I, I was raising my hand, but I didn't mean to. I was just giving you an example. <laughs> Acts 2, 1 through 4 says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, yes, I love that, amen. They were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The, the word for Pentecost simply means 50th, 50 days after Passover. And uh, so, you know, some people have all kinds of ideas when they hear the, the title or the word Pentecost, but it just simply means 50, the 50th day. But it was also the Jewish festival, Feast of Weeks or Shavuot, and this is when it occurred. And the reason this is so critically important is that on that day, Jerusalem was filled with people from all over the known world. Jews from all over the known world had come as they had been commanded for this feast, the Feast of Weeks. And so what's interesting is that when this sound occurred, the multitude had come together and were confused. And it says, because everyone heard them speak his own language. Everyone heard them speak his own language language. Was it gibberish? No. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Of course, for Christians, Pentecost is the day the church was born. But more importantly, it was the day of the arrival of the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Here's the irony of this. We have all the liturgical churches who don't, do not really believe in the moving and the, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit have a huge thing in their, their lectionary about the day of Pentecost. And they don't even believe it's for today. Do you know most Pentecostal churches never mention the day of Pentecost uh, uh, on their calendar? Someone said, well, that's because we have Pentecost every day. Oh, I wish it were so. But anyway, uh, there's a lot of things I could say. You, you've all heard the scripture I just read about the day of Pentecost and what happened on the day of Pentecost. Um, and, and of course, uh, what, what I want to say today is that uh, instead of introducing that experience, I want to introduce the person of Pentecost to you. And many of you already are aware of who he is. The tradition of TLC is Pentecostal with a strong emphasis of being filled with the Holy Spirit and the presence of spiritual gifts in public worship is welcome. But so much of our tradition as Pentecostals has unfortunately caused us to think of the Holy Spirit as an experience rather than welcoming a most precious resident into our lives and our churches. So... Once again, I want to introduce you to the person of Pentecost. John 14, 16 through 7, Jesus said, I will pray the Father and He will give you another Helper that He may abide with you forever, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him for He dwells with you 
and will be in you. In just two short verses, Jesus refers to him or he five times. Holy Spirit's not an it. Nowhere in the Word of God is the Holy Spirit called an it. Nowhere in the Scriptures is it implied that the Holy Spirit is just an experience. Jesus said, I'm introducing you uh, a pre-introduction to who's coming. And He's going to do this. And He's going to do that. And you know Him because you know Him. And, and He will do this and that. So, and, and we'll have more Scriptures where we have Him Refer to the Holy Spirit, the person of Pentecost. But before I tell you about him, I want you to close your eyes and welcome the Holy Spirit into our service and into your heart. Holy Spirit, as that song says, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, we often pray to Jesus, but we seldom pray to you. Holy Spirit, often we say, we're so excited because we have Jesus in our heart, but we so seldom acknowledge that we have you in our heart. And so, Holy Spirit, teach us about yourself. Holy Spirit, reveal you yourself to us. And on this day of Pentecost, may we celebrate that you are here in our service and you are in our hearts and our lives. Amen. Well, first of all, the Holy Spirit is our helper. John 16, 7, Jesus said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Can you imagine how the disciples felt about that? I mean, they bet everything on Jesus and following Jesus, and they left everything to follow Jesus, and they get down to this whole point, and Jesus said, Oh, by the way, I'm leaving. (laughs) I can't imagine they were very excited to hear that. Somebody turned to the other and said, why did, I leave? why did I leave my business? Because he's leaving now, and I, I'm not sure I can go back and pick up where I left off. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. They're going, how could, it, how could this be advantageous? How could this be good news? That Jesus is abandoning us. But he said, this is why I'm leaving For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Jesus uses the title, the Helper. How does he help us? Well, number one, he helps us come to faith. Think about this with me for a minute. Before we trust Jesus for our salvation, we know there's a lot of things wrong with our world. Anybody else notice there's a lot of things wrong in our world? If we look a little bit closer, if we look inside, we realize there's a whole lot of things wrong with us. We don't know how to fix it. We don't know how to remedy it. We try different ways to ignore it and fix it and deal with it. But the truth of the matter is, we know that there's a lot of things wrong in our world and we're not the solution. We're part of the problem. Well, in addition... We struggle with guilt. We struggle with weakness. We try and we fail, and then we even have regret. Well, the work of the Holy Spirit is to show us that problem is sin, and that the solution is righteousness, and righteousness comes to us through the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross. Most Christians understand the power of the cross. But John uh, 16.8, Jesus said, but... And notice the he and he and he in this. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Because of the Holy Spirit, at some point in our prayers, in our uh, interaction with Christians who come into our lives, which seems random, but it's not, we, we begin to understand not only is the world broken, but there's a solution. This is what the Holy Spirit does for us. We, we know things are wrong. It's not, it's not like the Holy Spirit comes and says, now I'm going to show you what's right and I'm going to show you what's wrong and you're definitely wrong. 
But what the Holy Spirit begins to show us, there's an entire different worldview. There's a solution to all of the problems. There's a solution for my problems. And the world is sinful and the Holy Spirit says, look, look at all this stuff. I've, I've heard people say, you know, I, the Holy Spirit, they understand this later. They don't say this in the beginning, but later someone says, you know, I, I begin to understand. I begin to look out and I begin to see that things I've always done, I wasn't comfortable with anymore. And I begin to see that things that I once thought were okay were no longer okay. That's the Holy Spirit. And aren't you glad he does that? But he doesn't leave us going, okay, the world is just an absolute cesspool of sin, and you better, you better climb out of it somewhere, buddy. Better get out of it. It's not going to be good in the end. But the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to us that Jesus took care of the sin problem. And so that's the first way that he helps us. And this in and of itself could be a whole sermon series, but the bottom line, without the helper, we not only couldn't be saved, we wouldn't know that we could be saved. It's amazing if we think that we're special because we came to the realization that we needed to be saved. We're like, you know what? I got saved. How come you didn't get saved? You only got saved because the Holy Spirit, your helper, he was helping you before you were a Christian. A lot. And you didn't even know it. And sometimes you even got mad at the people he was using to help you find the Savior. But secondly, he gives us gifts so that we can grow and walk in our faith. You imagine if God just brought us to salvation and said, here's a holy life. Good luck, buddy. Hope, it, hope this works out for you. How many of you know we can't do it on our own? And so the Holy Spirit lives in us and He gives us gifts and He gives us power and He gives us strength and He gives us comfort. Wow, I better just stop there. That's I could just preach for about, till about one o'clock on that one. I just get excited over it. Secondly, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. However, here's John 16, 30. However, when He, the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. <laughs> Have we ever needed the Holy Spirit to tell us what things are to come like we do today? Have we ever needed the truth more than we need the truth right now? Uh, wow, as Jesus nears the end of his earthly ministry, it becomes apparent that even his closest disciples are clueless. So I'm going to go up there, I'm going to be crucified, and I'm going to rise on the third day. <laughs> they, they absolutely do not grasp this. If, if they do, they say, oh no, we're going to make sure that doesn't happen. We know how that worked out for Peter, don't we? Oh, we won't let that happen. Oh, you're not going to do that. No, you don't need to do that. I mean, can you imagine his closest associates are, are, uh, are, are not, they not only don't understand a thing of what he is saying about what is going to happen, but they're absolutely no encouragement to him whatsoever. It becomes apparent that even his closest disciples have no idea who he really is and what he is about to do. Namely, go into Jerusalem at the Passover and get himself crucified. This does not fit with their idea of Messiah. This is not the Messiah I signed up to follow. Well, Jesus says, well, nevertheless, I'm going to go get myself crucified. No, you're not. Not on my watch, said Peter. Well, of course, they not only don't believe that it's going to happen, they have absolutely zero understanding that the direction of the entire human race is going to be changed forever on an old rugged cross. Boy, they needed Jesus to leave so they could get the Holy Spirit. Because they were going to remain clueless till they died if they didn't have some help. Amen? It's interesting on the day of Pentecost when the teacher shows up, 
Peter, the man who ran away and at first didn't believe the women who told him that Jesus rose from the dead, stands up and with the help of said teacher, preaches an absolutely brilliant sermon on a topic that he didn't even understand two weeks ago. I mean, think about it. That's a night and day picture. I'm going to go get crucified. No, you're not. And then he stands up in the face of all of their enemies and he preaches one of the most beautiful sermons recorded in the Word of God. You know who, you know who was speaking through him? It was the teacher. And when you, when you read this incredible book and you read the epistles, the handbook on how you do church, well, even more important, what is church? How do you do it? These are the guys who couldn't even understand who Jesus was and what he was going to do and why. And boy, do we ever need the teacher. If we ever needed the teacher, church, we need the teacher during these times of this pandemic. 2 Peter 1, 20 through 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved, and I would say taught, by the Holy Spirit. But here's maybe the most important thing to know about this person of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God in us. God in us. Now, that's a phrase that almost sounds like Christmas, doesn't it? Matthew 1.23, the, the, the angel to Mary, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. You guys, uh, even with the mask, you can, I can still almost hear you. God with us. It's one of the key thoughts that surrounds our celebrations of Christmas and Advent. We sing songs, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And we talk about God with us because Christmas is incredible when we realize that God stepped onto earth as a human baby. And we love the title Emmanuel because all of a sudden it brings us incredible hope. God loved us enough to come here. So someday we could go there. Isn't that wonderful? It's deep theology. I know it's deep. God came here so we could go there. I don't know if I can understand much beyond that, but if I got that one down, that's good. God with us. And that should be an incredible part of the Christmas story. That God came down to us when we had absolutely no hope of ever going up to Him is the beauty and the wonder at the core of the Christmas story. His presence here on earth destroyed the power of sin and ushered in the possibility of eternal salvation through grace and not works by His sacrifice. But hear me now. We talk to Jesus all the time. We seldom talk to the Holy Spirit. We think of Jesus as living in our hearts we sing about Him and, about, and to Him, but we seldom sing about or talk about or pray to the God who is in us, the Holy Spirit, the person of Pentecost. So this morning I'm giving you the name for the God in us. Turn to your neighbor and say His name is Holy Spirit. Don't get too close to him, unless you're married. His name is Holy Spirit, not its name. He's not an experience, he's a person. Let me prove this to you from Scripture. Ezekiel 36, 27. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my commandments and do them. What a promise. I will put my spirit in you. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Holy Spirit of God dwells in you? 2 Timothy 1.13-14 But uh, 
Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Romans 8.11 But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. It says it twice in that same Scripture. What good is a helper if you never let him help you? (laughs) This is the funny crowd this morning. I mean, not funny in the, I'm not laughing at you. (laughs) This is a, this is a really funny setting. Um, I am laughing. I guess I have to because I'm now nervous. I was doing fine. Let me ask that again. Let me get back on track here. <laughs> what good is a helper if you never let him help you? Jesus said he's going to, I'm giving him to you as your helper. Remember when my, I remember when we got, my sister got my dad a cell phone. Some of you are laughing because you had the same experience with, with your parents or maybe you had that experience yourself. So, so dad was kind of, mom was gone, recently gone, and we're, we're just, you know, it's, and, and if I'm remembering this, I think I remember this correctly, but, um, you know, the idea was he could carry it around, and we could call him and make sure he's okay, but the funny thing is, the uh, first time he's out there hollering into this thing, you know, somehow I'm going to holler loud enough in Buena Vista so you can hear me in Cedar Edge. You know, you're just holding it out here. It's so funny. Uh, a cell phone is a help, can be a helpful thing. Amen? If you use it. And use it correctly. What good is a teacher if we never make an effort to learn from him? See, you can have as much God in you as you want. You're the one that makes up that decision. You can be opening the Word of God. You can be learning. You can be devouring. You'll be going, oh, wow. I can't believe this. I got a young new friend named Michael. Uh, some some point I'll unpack his story. It is an incredible miracle. He's going to be here next week. I'm going to baptize him up on the Grand Mesa. Um, he calls me and talks to me about, I, I gave him Dallas Willard's divine, uh, divine conspiracy. <laughs> yes, a great, great book. It's, uh, it's not milk, man. It, it make you chew, chew, chew. But this guy is so hungry, and he's a deep, deep thinker. Young man. And uh, he had to give me this long math. He, he uh, read something about John 15 and the vine and the branches, and then he wrote me this long thing. Uh, on, on, and I'm going, I can preach that. I never thought of that before. Holy Spirit, teaching those who want to learn. You know, Christy's having a hard time. She's teaching online. Nobody shows up. Opens the Zoom room. Waits for somebody to connect. Is that frustrating? Extremely. Extremely. Can you imagine being Holy Spirit, the teacher, and you get ready for class? You got 140 people at TLC. You're hoping somebody will show up. (laughs) Just hungry to learn. Holy Spirit will teach you. You got to want to learn. You got to open up the connection. That's right, Sage. I feel the same way. So what good is a teacher if we never make an effort to learn from him? And how unthinkable to live day in and day out without even being aware that God, the Holy Spirit, God of the universe, is living in me. Wow. Now I'm not saying let's Let's just all ignore Jesus. Let's just pay attention to the Holy Spirit. 
We've been neglecting the Holy Spirit, so for the next six months, we're not going to talk to Jesus. We're not going to think about Jesus. We're going we're to only think about the Holy Spirit. That's not, that's not Jesus' idea. That's not God's will. But think about this. And you'll know this instinctively when I say it, but we don't say it. But let's face the truth. Jesus left earth. Turn to your neighbor and say, he left. Did Jesus say he was going to leave? Do you somehow think he changed his mind? <laughs> Here we pray to the Holy, we pray to the, Jesus all the time. We never say anything about the Holy Spirit. We never say anything to the Holy Spirit. But Jesus is gone. Let me, let me show you scripture. John 16, 5, But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? Where is he? Hebrews 8, 1, We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Ephesians 1, 20, Which he worketh in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. Now when Stephen is being martyred, he says in Acts 7, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. You want to get closer to God, start talking to the God that's in us. Don't bypass Him and say, you know, I only talk to Jesus. I mean, you can do that. But the Holy Spirit's right here. And he has a job description. It's your helper. He's your teacher. He's in you. When you become a Christian, when you trust Jesus for your salvation, and you say, God, forgive me of my sin. I'm a sinner. Would you come in? Would you cleanse me? Would you wash me? The Holy Spirit brought you to that day, to that moment. And then it's like we forget about him. And we have this incredible love affair with Jesus. What it must feel like to be the Holy Spirit sometimes. But he's so loving and so patient with us. If you really want intimate relationship with God, I honestly believe that we need to get to know the person of Pentecost. He's not going to make you weird. You know how I know that? Because you're already weird. <laughs> it's too late for you. Oh, if I get the Holy Spirit, I'm going to get weird. Hey, just put that fear aside. You got weird without him. Maybe he can help you. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was mean. But if I could say it again, I would. But I won't. Probably you want a really intimate. You know, if you're going to have a relationship with God, why not an intimate relationship? Why, why not an amazing relationship? Why not a relationship that impacts every day of your life? You will not get that without the Holy Spirit. You are going to have to have a transaction, transactions with Him. You're going to have to have relationship with Him. And you can just, I would just say every morning, just get up and say, hey, Jesus, I love you, but I'm going to go here and talk to the Holy Spirit for a little bit. Because he's here. And you're seated by the right hand of the Father. You're intercessing for me. You're doing great things for me, but he's going with me today wherever I go. So I need to have a conversation with him to start my day out. For some of you, you're going to go, I don't know, it's, I never did that. Well, take it from me. I love you. Do it. Pray, Holy Spirit, person of Pentecost. Holy Spirit, come in my life. Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, teach me. Holy Spirit, have the freedom to live to an overflow in me. 
This week I want you to practice. I'm telling you what to do now. Barely been back in the building a little over an hour. Now I'm telling you what to do. And I love it. I miss telling you what to do. No. I just want you to try something this week. I just want you to pray to the Holy Spirit. I just want you to say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this heart. Maybe even sing that little song and set a place. Just put the word heart in there. It, don't, it won't rhyme or nothing, but it could do you some really wonderful good. Lord, we come today. Holy Spirit, you are the person of Pentecost. And I suspect, Lord, Holy Spirit, that we have neglected you to our own detriment. We have bypassed you. We have been unaware that you have been helping us and you have been teaching us. And today we take this Pentecost Sunday to thank you for the work that you do most often behind the scenes in our lives how you teach us what to say, how you stop us from saying maybe what we shouldn't say. Lord, Holy Spirit, I think it's okay to tell you that we love you and we are grateful for your work and your presence in our lives. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that this week will be filled with acquainting ourselves more and more with you and your work in our lives. Lord, go with us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Uh, If I talk to you about a box of groceries, please just kind of mill around over there six feet apart.